It's Pioneer agronomist Scott Eversker with a week of July 11th agronomy update. With the recent rains that fell over the past week, had many growers asking in the past few days about fungicide applications on corn. Now that we've got a little bit of yield potential back into this crop, a lot of guys have been asking, should I spray or should I not spray? So some things to consider as, as you're making that decision. The thing that comes to mind the biggest is the yield level. So look at that crop and really decide what kind of yield you think you've got out there giving favorable weather from this period on. In a lot of cases, what we see is corn in that 140 to 160 and above, that yield level probably has the best chance on the lowest side of the response range. So we'd like to see those yields 150-ish and above, and we think that's where the best response is going to is going to be. From a disease level, overall on dryland production in the last week, even with the rains, haven't seen a disease come yet, but I fully expect uh, these diseases run on, li on life cycles of 10 to 14 or 14 to 21 days. So in about two to three weeks after the rains, we could probably expect a pretty significant increase in the disease levels. That's going to put us about beginning of this week and, and through this week with the environment we currently have, a lot more humidity, the ground now has moisture in it, and definitely inoculum there. So I would look for disease levels to increase over the next two to three weeks. And as you look at that timing, if you do decide to make an application, probably the best scenario what we're in right now is somewhere after pollination, but prior to brown silk. That's going to give you about a two to three week window to go ahead and get that application made. Now, if the fields are uneven, like a lot of fields are out there in a lot of cases, what we'd recommend is spray just the fungicide and water, and then maybe an insecticide, but make sure there are no surfactants or other adjuvants in that tank, using just the fungicide and just the water. From a hybrid standpoint, obviously there are hybrid differences, but do realize that even the strongest hybrid resistance uh, to gray and northern especially can be overcome in a bad uh, bad disease year. So even the best hybrids, we could make this, could develop this scenario for those to be sprayed as well. So the bottom line is you're going to have to be out in your fields, you're going to have to be out there looking to make that final decision. Also look at that current environment, whether it was corn on corn, whether it was no-till, reduced till, all those things that have the opportunity to increase the inoculum in a field. Now, while we're all after yield being that big effect of the fungi fungicide we'd like to see, there are, can be other effects like late season plant uh, health and, and consequently standability. We've seen that in the past that plants do stay a little greener, a little healthier going into the fall season, which could ultimately help in, uh, in, in gross dollars per acre as well. And as we all know, with the current price of corn, uh, we're looking at about a 10 bushel response to, to kind of break even on the fungicide application. So you kind of got to look at all the factors we've talked about and make your best case scenario as to whether you think you can get that 10 bushel response. If you have any questions on specific hybrids, uh, please give your Pioneer rep a call. They've got all the information to help you through the disease ratings of the hybrids. And if you have any questions beyond that, uh, please have them get a hold of their account manager or myself.